find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to you. have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show 50. This is the 50th time we've gathered here to talk indie wrestling exclusively here on the Sorgatron Media Network. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here live in Pittsburgh. PA, well, not live. We're not here on the usual Tuesday night. Wanted to get this in before the holiday and before we get sloppy drunk uh, for the Wrestling Mayhem Show 450 that's coming up or you or has already come up. I need to do a SmackDown style where I pretend it's actually Tuesday, but it's <laughs> actually the week before, right? Um, but with me, as always, my compatriot here on the show. He's a commentator down with NWA Inspire Pro and now a writer with NWA Ringside. Get it on uh, internet newsstands everywhere, I guess. Uh, <laughs> he's at Eamon too, please. Eamon Peyton, how you doing, sir? Absolutely. Uh, I'm doing fantastic. It's it's the 50th. I mean, we've done 50 of these, sort. We've done 50. Yes. That's weird to me. But I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm definitely very the, excited. The count is, I believe we're at over 45 guests. Awesome. We've had a awesome. couple of double guests. We've had a couple of returns. And, of course, we got two returns tonight and some of the finest minds in the wrestling business. I want you to introduce them in just a moment. But in the meantime, first, we want you to check out, of course, our friend Basic Sickness. Gives us that great theme song at the beginning at basicsickness.com. Pittsburgh represent. And, of course, you can check out everything we're doing. Uh, this and uh, uh, our minds are still blown from NXT TakeOver. So please check out the Midweek Wars over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Um, and you can subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the Wrestling Mayhem Show as a whole over on YouTube. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode of any of the stuff that we're doing over here. And, of course, you can contact us with your thoughts on indie wrestling, other wrestling, whatever is on your mind. Maybe you just need a friend over at Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the hotline at 412-206-WMS0. We won't get mad if you call when you're drunk. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Mayhem Show or Wrestling May- Mayhem Show on Facebook and Google+. Plus. And of course, after the holiday, we'll be back live every Tuesday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central at live.sorgatronmedia.com. So as, like I said, we have two ghosts. Yeah, ghosts. <laughs> guests this afternoon. There are two ghosts in the studio They're right kind of ghostly if you're on the video. One's just a uh, floating voice and the other one is is... Is I don't even know how to describe his webcam. Um, <laughs> Circa yeah. 1970s, I think it's probably the best way. Guest of a ni- uh, the ghost of a 1970s webcam. That voice you hear is uh, the uh, sometimes voice of Ring of Honor Wrestling, the voice of IWC Wrestling, at least. Uh, Joe Dabrowski.com, Outsource Announcing, Montreal Theory. He's done it all and yet has so much to do. Joe Dabrowski, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well, and I believe this is actually uh, my second Indie Mayhem show, which is not quite as big of a milestone as 50, but I'm still celebrating the big O2. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, Eamon, I was... And our original guest as well. So Yes, our first guest, and maybe our last. <laughs> uh, and and uh, Eamon, I'll let you interview uh, uh, the fellow from your neck of the woods. Well, I hope I do it pretty well, or else I'd be out of a job. But uh, he's the booker and promoter uh, for NWA Inspire Pro Wrestling. He's done numerous things throughout the uh, Texas independent wrestling scene, and I believe it's his third time uh, on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, it's my boss, uh, Biss. Biss, how are you doing tonight? What's up, guys? <laughs> Fantastic. So basically, uh, we just wanted to do kind of a roundtable, have return guests, uh, and really just talk about the year and the state of indie wrestling in general. Just have a conversation, uh, you know, other than an interview like we usually do here on this show. Um, and we will have this more as we kind of return some guests uh, as we go on. But definitely for the big five zero, I w- wanted to go back and end the year kind of off on, on this kind of foot. Uh, so, Eamon, I think you want to get started with the conversation here. Well, I think, especially with indie wrestling and, and just wrestling in general, or, or you can even argue any you know, medium of any sort, uh, they, things rise and, and fall in popular, popularity. Wrestling's done that many times over the years. Uh, just, 
out of the blanket of what you feel indie wrestling has been like in 2014, do you think it's it's rose, risen in popularity? Do you think um, uh, it's you know been more popular in the past? Uh, uh, just out of curiosity, what what do you guys think of the state of indie wrestling right now uh, from this past year? Well, um, that's a pretty loaded question. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think there are, there are ways that it's better and, and ways that it's not. Um, you know, I think you can look at, at kind of the mid two thousands as a golden age of independent wrestling, as I would call it. Um, that really what was the point where you had the deepest talent pool to work with. You had all the TNA guys who weren't yet exclusive with TNA, all the ring of honor guys, uh, when ring of honor was still doing a really light schedule. You had a lot of guys, off of WCW, ECW, WF looking for work, uh, uh, Japan had finally started to become more of an influence in, in, in U.S. Indies. And, and the Internet was causing this big groundswell of change and popularity. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know that, that uh, um, we've been able to equate that necessarily since, but I do think independent wrestling is on an upswing. I think we see a trend lately... Um, really not just uh, uh, in wrestling specifically, but, but throughout society that, that has in pockets more of a appreciation for the homegrown organic mom and pop type of products, as opposed to the rich fat cat corporations. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great that we are seeing um, places like Lucha underground and PWG and, uh, uh, House of Hardcore and, and all these different organizations, Pro Wrestling Syndicate, FWE, uh, out in Chicago, out in California, uh, the convention circuit, um, mm. all these different areas, all these different styles, Canada, Smash Wrestling, Sebastian Suave's doing great stuff. Uh, down in Texas, they have more of a buzz now. Um, you know, all these different places uh, have their own style. They have their share of good. They have their share of bad. But especially with places like PWG, uh, uh, with uh, a World Wrestling Network going to China, Jakara coming back, uh, CZW still doing their thing, stuff like that. Um, it seems like there's more variety. Um, the products are the products are always going to be niche. They're not going necessarily hit the mainstream, but you're able to satiate different types of fans and what they want and what they look for in wrestling. So I think you know I mentioned uh, on the show the other day. Uh, uh, the main show um, that we're going to have five different promotions represented on national television in some form or another in 2015. And I'd love to see more. Uh, you don't, you don't need to compete with WWE. You don't need to be the number one in the world, but uh, uh, entrench yourself, know who you are, know what you are brand properly um, and get the word out properly. And everybody can see some kind of growth. Yeah, I think, uh, well, we have a cool little situation. It wasn't very cool back then, but, the mid 2000s, Texas kind of closed its eyes and you know shut its mouth and wouldn't take its medicine. So we we didn't really experience that same growth. Um, There's a lot of stubbornness down here, and just recently we've got to see some of the buzz. And uh, what, what's kind of weird is you see a lot more quality at, at the top, but there's not as many promotions as, as used to be. Yes. So it's kind of like you said, there's some good, there's some bad. Um, and I, I also look at the the top, the talent at the at the very top, and I think there's still spots there for people to ascend to. I think that that next generation of indie star needs to uh, people need to step up and and take those spots. I think those spots are still very much open. Absolutely, and Joe, you mentioned uh, you know sort of the peak of indie wrestling. A lot of people say it would be in the early 2000s. Uh, we actually never we haven't gotten the chance to mention this in the past on the Indie Mayhem show, but they announced um, for WrestleMania weekend upcoming that they're doing they're bringing back the uh, the King of the Indies tournament, which for those that don't know, I believe happened back in 2001, uh, and a lot of people say that was the um, fuel that sort of helped uh, create what Ring of Honor would to be uh, would to become. Do you think something like that could in, you know create something? that could lead independent wrestling into a new generation uh, uh, going forward? Not necessarily independent wrestling as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's so much tougher. Uh, I mean, back in the day, there were really two tournaments. There was the, the King of Indies out in California, and there was um, the ECWA Super 8 mm -hmm. in Delaware. And, and that, you know, 
tournaments like that, you'd see Daniels and Austin Aries and Kazarian and AJ Styles and even further back, uh, Reckless Youth, Billy Kinman, guys like that would really get their first big exposure. And, and back in those days, you know, it, it meant a lot more to be included in like a Pro Wrestling Illustrated or, or something like that. It's a lot harder to stand out these days because everybody has their own tournament. Everybody has their own signature show. And it's a lot easier to discover talent. You don't need to necessarily uh, wait for a certain company um, to bring them along. If you're a diehard indie fan, all you got to do is you hear a name, you go to YouTube, you're there, you've got it. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of guys have been able to rise a lot more organically. Uh, um, Andrew Everett is a great example off the top of my head of a guy who just got a buzz about him and, 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 you know, started soaring. So I think it's great that they are um, holding true to tradition and, and honoring Roland Alexander, who is a very influential promoter out there. Um, I think it'll be a, a hell of a show for the, the the people in town for WrestleMania. I don't think that's going to necessarily change anything drastically unless they have um, some sort of new or innovative concept attached to it or some sort of uh, branding beyond that. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you see, it's it's either it's either the the name value of somebody like Tommy Dreamer, or before it went belly up, Extreme Rising, or something like that, or it's the consistency of a PWG and a Chikara just being in the trenches and doing what they're doing over and over and over again. That's really getting people talking. Definitely. And yeah. I'll, oh, go ahead, Vince. Go ahead. Yeah, I will agree a hundred percent with that. Um, I think WrestleMania has already become kind of a you know, it's it's a calling for the wrestling community. You know, there's indie shows all around WrestleMania. So um, the fans that go to WrestleMania every year have probably already stumbled across either a, a Beyond, uh, you know, not a Beyond show, but an Evolve show or, or something along those lines. Um, and really, I'm not sure what this will add other than that those shows have, have already done. So. And then... I think one of the key things also is that, and we sort of mentioned before, the the fact that you have your like Lucha Undergrounds and, and stuff that are doing something beyond just being an independent wrestling organization. Uh, I think when we, me and Sorb started this show, we, we kind of had a hard time trying to define what constituted an indie wrestling company. Like I, I it's very, you know, there's a lot of broadening um, uh, groups that it's hard to just put them in that mold that is this is independent wrestling. Uh, and there are groups that are trying different things, you know, on television and, and through other mediums and stuff like that. Um, do you think that's going to be a, a, a bigger trend going forward? I think as the uh, uh, options and outlets for exposure increase, uh, there will always be a demand for wrestling because from a broadcast television perspective or from a a, a network executive perspective or anybody of that nature, um, it blows them away how cheaply wrestling can be produced. Um, Mm -hmm. When you have some of the talent you have and some of the um, production you have, um, and and a lot of people, and not that this is a good, bad, or indifferent thing, this is another thing we can debate, but a lot of people aren't doing it primarily for money. They're doing it for the fun. They're doing it for the passion. They're doing it uh, to advance their career in some way. So, um, you know, that benefits greatly. I know um, AAW out in Chicago, uh, they've been able to uh, uh, have some some streaming devices. And a lot of that technology, you guys know better than me, but I know they're available on, on uh, uh, one of these portable Roku gimmick channel thing stuff type mm-hmm. of deal. Um, and I think there's a couple others that are trying to get into it. Um, you know, I pay-per-view and, 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 and free per view uh, streaming, not a fine science yet. It still has its kinks, but that's always growing back five or seven years ago. If you're on I pay-per-view it's a huge deal. Wrestlers mm-hmm. would tell me, man, I've always wanted to work on I pay-per-view. And now, um, not to say anybody can do it, but it's not special anymore because it's, it's, it's more common and it's more, uh, uh, saturated throughout the, uh, the landscape. So I think it's going to become, uh, uh, a lot more of an even playing field in that sense where um, there'll be larger platforms for people to attempt to, to, to launch off of. And certainly it'll be survival of the fittest from there. And I think um, to sort of go off what you also mentioned before about how wrestling, independent wrestling is so accessible nowadays. Um, 
that it goes beyond it. It's the evolution, I think, of independent wrestling from you know obviously before my time, but the the whole idea of tape trading and stuff like that. This is you know having a lot of companies that are doing eye pay per view and and you know different streaming stuff like that. Uh, I think it just aids to that accessibility, you know, in, in that aspect. Absolutely does. And I think it's only going to continue to grow as people continue to develop the, the, the technology and fine tune it. And, uh, you know, much like has been the ever eternal struggle, um, the more not so great companies harness that opportunity, it's going to be tougher to differentiate yourself as a special product. Um, but uh, unfortunately, that's kind of a par for the course. Um, but hopefully, again, the guys that are doing the good things and uh, really getting a positive buzz about them will be able to get out there and re-educate the fans that you don't necessarily need a million-dollar budget to have an enthralling wrestling show. Because I think uh, independent wrestling can, can outdo WWE in a lot of ways. Um, the, the amount of action, the contemporary feel of the performers... Uh, the emotion and the intimate feel. Uh, there's there's definitely aspects of indie wrestling to market that mm-hmm. if somebody could market it right and have the right money and the right vision, um, they could present it as a a, uh, a definite uh, real alternative, kind of like Pauly was doing in the 90s, only you don't necessarily need extreme and violence. You need whatever the next trend is, which I've been saying for 15 years is reality, but Nobody on global television has figured that out yet. Um, <laughs> if there's still something to get to, to squeeze from that, great. If not, on to the next. But, uh, um, again, treating independent wrestling like a business is another uh, kind of a rarity that we've seen over the years, unfortunately. So I'd be curious to see who would, uh, who would step up and get that done. Yeah. I think also you know, the blanket term of indie wrestling may be beginning to be a little bit outdated. Um, your typical indie show where you have the, red, white, and blue Patriot, you know, and that's the character and there's no continuity from show to show is very different from what some of these people are doing. You almost break it down into, you know, local pro wrestling, regional pro wrestling and national pro wrestling. And then you have your little spot shows as well. Um, people are in different levels right now. And, uh, I think it's important to, to point out those levels instead of just kind of a blanket term of indie wrestling. Definitely. Um, uh, here's an idea. Going beyond sort of the idea of independent wrestling promotions, let's talk specifically more about independent wrestlers. Uh, from the time that we're filming this, uh, uh, for those listening, we're about an hour uh, removed from uh, NXT TakeOver, Our Evolution, uh, which I think was a amazing testament to the stars that really made independent wrestling special that are now on the big stage. You had Sami Zayn. Uh, Kevin Owens, now uh, formerly known as Kevin Steen, uh, Adrian Neville, uh, even some of the smaller people like a, like a, a Sasha Banks, uh, formerly Mercedes KV. Um, who do you think, in your opinion, is the next guy to make that leap uh, going forward? The leap to WWE specifically? Yes. Uh, who, who do you think they would maybe have their eye on or, or um, is somebody that they should uh, have their eye on? Oh, that's a difficult question. Um, I don't think they know week to week, to be completely honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't, I didn't see the NXT uh, special tonight because I spent my last nine ninety nine on this webcam. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm just going on the buzz. But a lot of people are speaking very positively of it. Um, you know, people will call me biased, but I, I have to look at a guy like Johnny Gargano. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is somebody that, uh, you know, as a performer, I feel like I know better than most because, um, you know, I, I was I was booking in for six years in Cleveland, Ohio, really before a lot of other people were, before Gabe Sapolsky was, before Chikara was. Um, and, you know, people talk about it factor, and it's very difficult to define or explain, uh, but Gargano had and has it the way he moved the way he carried himself the way he spoke the way he connected with the people that were there um head and shoulders above any other performer uh on our roster at the time and that's not a knock on anybody because certainly other guys excelled in other areas but when you look at complete package uh it was gargano and i think it still is gargano um 
even though he's certainly under contract to an organization near and dear to my heart, I would also point out Adam Cole. Um, I've said for a few years now, Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano, if they choose to make that step, uh, can very easily be a future WrestleMania main event. Uh, they're both very young still. They're both um, reasonably healthy. Of course, everybody's banged up. Um, you know, they look the part. They wrestle the part. They understand how to project bigger than they are. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, and, and to me, those are obvious choices, but it could be anybody. Um, I never expected them to be interested in Sammy Callahan. And that is not a knock on Sammy. I love the kid. I've known him for six years now, seven years. Mm -hmm. Um, But when you look at the stereotype, the prototype, um, you didn't think him. You didn't think El Generico, Mm -hmm. even though there were times when he was probably the best pound for pound guy in independent wrestling. Um, So that mold is really shattering. I think if I am WWE, um, I'm looking at the Young Bucks now because they have more buzz than anybody else right now. Uh, if I was WWE, I wouldn't have let AJ Styles slip away. Um, those guys can absolutely contribute because they've been able to make themselves brands and commodities and make big promotions good money without having this billion-dollar machine behind them. So imagine, um, not that everything WWE does is smart or right, but imagine if they really put the uh, the proverbial rocket ship up their rear ends, what that could turn into. That would be what I'm supposed to be thinking of. Yeah, I'll go a little biased here, too. I think ACH, if he can mature and grow up, is uh, <laughs> is definitely something that kind of breaks the mold and is something different. Um, on the, in that same vein, I, I think the Briscoes have money all over them on a national TV level. Um, but that may be, that's another PR type thing, I think. So. Definitely. And I think, you know, we obviously we saw the debut of uh, uh, Kevin Owens tonight, uh, formerly Kevin Steen. He's another guy that I think, like Joe mentioned, like you would never think would, would have gotten that contract. And, and now immediately his first night uh, uh, performing on, you know, a WWE stage, even though it's an, an NXT stage, uh, he's pretty, pretty much been catapulted into the top feud with uh, uh, Sami Zayn and Brooks. Um, and, I, I think that's definitely uh, interesting to see that they're shifting the kind of people that would sign. I think that old that old um, saying about how WWE only focuses on guys with you know gigantic muscles that weigh over you know a certain amount of pounds. I think that's definitely falling by the wayside. And I think to that point, uh, the audience is a lot smarter too and a lot more vocal. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and again, the trend of society and, and, and kind of the over, um, the overproduction and, and the, the just, just, uh, uh, homogenization of so much entertainment. Um, you know, I think, uh, uh, fans, you know, watch today's product and compare it to maybe not even a ring of honor, but, but just, you know, your average wrestling show from, from 10, 15 years ago and, and, and see the difference. And they are, are not going to stand for the, a six foot six, three hundred ten pound athlete, force fed uh, down their throats. It just it's not viable anymore, especially with the rise of of UFC and Floyd Mayweather and people like that who are smaller than probably uh, the vast majority of even today's WWE roster, but uh, still are, are million dollar attractions. And uh, the fans have always had the power, and they can vote with their dollar and vote with their remote. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, I, I, the best example of that is Daniel Bryan and uh, where the reported plans for him were going and where they ended up. Um, that shows you that uh, um, even though they may not always uh, uh, hear the right way, they do attempt to listen and they do attempt to adjust accordingly um, to, to, to satisfy their audience, certainly on a broad based scale. Um so uh, the best thing fans can do is just continue to voice their opinion um, constructively, not whining on the internet and clogging up my news feed on Facebook every Monday night. <laughs> um, but, you know, just don't watch or don't pay to see John Cena or don't pay to see whoever, or don't spend that, uh, that, that uh, $10 that month or, or, or that $20 on that DVD or whatever. Go buy a TNA show, buy a ring of honor ticket, whatever the case is. Um, that's the only way things are going to change. And, and it's great to see that, uh, with guys like punk and Brian getting that reception that, that let's face it, 
they couldn't ignore. Um, that I think is the beginning of a lot more of that to come in, in coming years. Yeah, I I think you see a major difference on what you see on Monday night and what you see on the network on Thursday night. Um, it's a lot less overproduced. Um, you kind of look and I mean, look at who's down there in Florida right now. You have uh, Dusty down there, Robbie Brookside, you know, just wrestling guys. And I think when you leave wrestling alone and you have very talented individuals and you keep wrestling simple, you get amazing stuff like what happened tonight. Um, you know, I think a, a big thing too, Daniel Bryan was successful and there's been a lot of hubbub about Cesaro and where Cesaro went. Well, mm-hmm. Cesaro was over with the, a move that they could take away from him. They couldn't take that chant away from Dan O'Brien. Very true. Um, sort of looking, uh, uh, take that question in reverse. I think another thing that's happened a lot, especially this year and, and 2013 even as well, uh, you'll see, say, a talent uh, leave uh, uh, WWE or leave a major uh, organization and, and go towards the indies. Uh, uh, a lot of people would say that AJ Styles has had immense success uh, ever since leaving uh, TNA, uh, I know Alberto Del Rio. Uh, now uh, Alberto El Patron is is you know making his way around. Uh, just announced today, I believe that he'll be debuting for Ring of Honor coming up. Um, if you if you had your choice of who, I, I know nobody wants to you know leave a, a, a nice job, but um, uh, if you had a choice of who do you think could be a success on the independents from uh, not either either WWE or TNA. Um, uh, who do you think uh, uh, sticks out into your mind as somebody that could make that transition and, and, and really benefit? Well, I will. Uh, mm, that's a tough question. Uh, I'm not going to go to the uh, the cop out answers because there there's so many guys that came from the independents that obviously, yeah. you know, if you if you put Samoa Joe back on the scene tomorrow, if you put Dean Ambrose back on the scene tomorrow, um, they do amazing business. Uh, somebody that. Uh, uh, would benefit well first of all who, who i think would have the most success but probably not as much success as they're having now would probably be Dolph Ziggler mm. uh and and you could make a laundry list of potential dream matches there um it's tough to it's tough to dictate who would uh who would benefit from it because you have to to compare how often they're used versus downside guarantees versus how much they'll get on the independents um sure. and and certainly some guys that's helped them a lot some guys just uh, aren't cut out for the uh, the corporate entertainment side of wrestling. I think Alberto, with his roots, uh, falls under that category. Punk, punk with his roots, certainly. We can't argue that. Um, I got to look at a guy like Zack Ryder, because he still has an underground following. And um, for whatever reason, I'm not blaming Zack. I'm not blaming The Office, because obviously I wasn't there. Um, his run, so to speak, kind of got cut off at the knees. Mm. Uh, and I think there's still money in him. And I think he's very relatable to an indie fan because you can obviously look at his Instagram, look at his Twitter, see, he's a big fan too. He's a goofball. He's a little bit of a nerd. He fits in with with that wrestling subculture. And, uh, I think woo 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 is catchy enough and remembered enough where, um, you know, relatively speaking through the indies that would draw. So, um, but if he's happy, all power to him. But, uh, you know, I, I would like to see what he would do uh, on the Indies because I think his boy Hawkins is doing pretty well for himself, too. Yeah, it definitely does seem like it. This was there anyone that kind of stuck out in your mind? Uh, yeah, you, it, you never really know. I, I think um, somebody like Kofi Kingston might be able to, to draw in some interest. Um, you never really know who who's going to catch fire and, and maybe can reinvent themselves. So, but yeah, definitely. Um, now, now to speak towards back to sort of indie wrestling in general, but uh, you mentioned um, how like independent wrestling a lot in the early two thousands got influenced by uh, uh, a lot of people would say it's still influenced by a lot of the Japanese style. Um, if, do you think that do you think that will continue going forward? Do you think there's a shift? Or have you noticed a shift into um, a changing of the style of, of traditional independent wrestling, at least at least to a certain level? It's it's always evolving, and I think there's there's going to be a Japanese influence more so now than ever because New Japan is going to be so much more widely accessible um, to a vast audience, 
And whether you're a fan of the product and want to emulate or, or tribute some of the performers, or whether you know the mainstream fan just hadn't seen this cool move, so I might as well swipe it. Uh, mm -hmm. Either way, um, you know, it, it's working. And, and Japan has a, a, a buzz second to none, and you can uh, it, arguably second to none right now based on how far they've grown. I think I read somewhere, um, one of the wrestlers may have said it, New Japan was the only um, the only uh, global wrestling company that made any money in 2014. And I can't confirm or deny that, but if that's true, that speaks volumes mm -hmm. for what they've been able to accomplish. So I, I think indie wrestling is always going to be a melting pot Japanese style, European style, Mexican style, um, traditional American TV style. Uh, and, and the trick is just to use those, uh, uh, those outskirts, so to speak, to complement, uh, uh, you know, something that is recognizable and, and not necessarily basic, but, uh, uh, able to be digested by the average fan because you can't, uh, you can't, certainly wrestle uh, above the heads of your audience and you can't insult their intelligence either. So there's always going to be ebb and flow. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I think the indies are, uh, you know, there people are always going to be looking for some way to stick out. And the best way to do that is to find things that people haven't seen or people have forgotten about. So, well, Japan will always influence the indies because, you don't see it. Maybe it might even be a little bit less now that you'll have New Japan on national TV. But you know, you never know. Is it going to be catch wrestling? Is it going? What's the next trend going to be? You know, definitely. Um, not to sort of go to it. I mean, obviously, we have we have both you guys on. Uh, uh, you've done variety of things in, in in your separate areas, uh, um, especially throughout this year. Um, I, I kind of want to get a feeler, and, and for those listening also, just sort of everything that's been going on in, in, in each of your sort of neck of the woods um, of this past year, and, and, and feel free to, you know, um, include anything that you think uh, uh, should be. I, I guess I can start with Joe. Uh, just sort of how – because, I mean, you your uh, range of stuff has definitely been a bit more wider than just, you know, Pittsburgh or even Pennsylvania. Um, uh, so how, how do you think 2014 has been for you and you specifically? Um, honestly, 2014 has been, um, maybe my favorite year. I've been doing this since 2003 and, um, really the, the start of, um, my positive upswing was, um, not booking wrestling anymore. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it just became such an albatross to me. And I, you know, for six years I was running hard doing, you know, probably 35 TV episodes a year. And, uh, uh, by the end, I just completely burnt myself out taking on far too many responsibilities uh, by necessity rather than choice. But, um, you know, putting out Montreal Theory and finding Zach Gowan and, and, and some of the best of DVDs and refereeing 101 and being able to travel again and be in Ring of Honor and Border City Wrestling for Scott Demore and Los Angeles for Wrestling Cares and do uh, do my pay-per-view debut for the Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars series and for Kevin Kleinrock's uh, Masked Mania Lucha show out in Philadelphia. Um, you know, having that clarity and having that um, balance again, where it's not just being consumed and overstressed and wrestling's work. Wrestling still work, but it's fun again. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing stuff that I want to do, and I'm doing stuff that... Um, can actually relatively make me money that can actually uh, uh, progress me forward and I can learn things and I can develop and forge new relationships and work with guys like Matt Stryker and Mark Mad and Shane Douglas and Jack Rapella and, uh, and Scott Demore and, and just, just soak up whatever they give to me, soak up uh, anything I learned just from listening to them or for talking to them or whatever it may be. Um, you know, Pittsburgh wrestling has it's good and it's bad. I think it's oversaturated. I think, um, there is a lot of potential that's not necessarily being realized. And uh, there's some cases of, of just outright um, ignorance in terms of uh, some of the, the lesser spoken about organizations and uh, how they choose to present themselves. And I don't think that's exclusive to Pittsburgh. I think that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of great talent in Pittsburgh, but the problem is that, uh, there are there are a lot of wrestling schools. There's a wrestling school almost as much as there are Starbucks now. They're on every friggin' corner. But it is so difficult to find a school 
with uh, a trainer that knows how to guide you to get where you want to be. How many trainers are there that have been in WWE or WCW or TNA? Mm -hmm. Uh, I can teach you how to wrestle, but they can't teach you how to be a star. They can't teach you how to market yourself. They can't teach you how to get out there and, and, and uh, just hustle and, 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 and grow and develop. And that's a problem. And a lot of guys, I won't mention names, but uh, a lot of guys just don't know how to market themselves and don't know how to break out of the pack, even though they're talented enough to, it's not always about that. It's about putting yourself in the right position, putting your name on the right person's lips, whatever the case may be. Um, uh, I'll bring up a friend of mine. I won't mention anybody in Pittsburgh, but a friend of mine out in Indiana named Brett Havoc. Um, great talent. Uh, uh, not the biggest guy in the world, but a uh, lot of heart, a lot of passion, connects with the crowd really well. Very good worker. But mm-hmm. outside of his hometown, I don't know that anybody's heard of him because it wasn't instilled in him from day one. Okay, this is how you become the best wrestler in this town but this is how you go further than that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been trying to help him out and, 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 you know, whatever little bit I've learned over the years, you got to get to Chicago, you got to get to Detroit, you got to get to Pittsburgh, you got to get wherever as many different people seeing you as many eyeballs as possible. Um, You know, and, and and that's tough to get somebody in that mindset where uh, if somebody comes up and not saying this is the case with Brett, but just in general, People are just like, oh, I want to wrestle. This is so cool. I'm a star in my hometown. But they don't think this is a job. This is a business. I need to figure out how to make money. I need to, excuse me, I need to merchandise. I need to put myself out there more. I need to network. Um, Can you imagine if you went to the average wrestler in the 1970s and explained to them what the internet was and that one day it'll be (laughs) around and you would call or send UPS packages and wait six weeks for a callback? You can just email somebody and they'll, they'll get it two seconds later. And, and, you know, the gravity of people, veteran wrestlers, veteran promoters, they're around that you can pick their brains that are out of the business. They're not busy. They're not on the road five days a week. Um, there's so many resources out there to, um, I know I got off on a tangent away from the question. I feel like Tracy <laughs> Smothers is just going on here, but. <laughs> Um, there's so many resources out there and so many opportunities for guys to keep growing and keep getting better. Um, I would like to see guys develop that more because a lot of what I see is, is, uh, very positive and, uh, uh, moving very forward, but there's a lot of people too. I just shake my head and I'm like, you're so good, but you're in front of 40 people and you don't seem to care. And Mm -hmm. that breaks my heart when I see guys have matches where I can think to myself, I haven't seen a match that uh, uh, with that much emotion on a Monday night in six months. But, you know, well, these 75 people liked it. So, you know, to start, um, that bothers me because mm-hmm. I've never been a guy that's been happy where I'm at. Um, you know, I love everything I do. I love everywhere I work, but I'm always looking for what's next because when you stop looking for that, you, know, you stop getting better and then you just become complacent. It's time to get out. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Biss, to kind of kind of speak to your end, uh, I know, obviously, uh, yeah. Inspire, Inspire Purpose uh-huh. founded last year, but uh, two, 2014 has been a, you know, a real banner year for us and for the company. Uh, uh, on your end, how do, you, how do you think your year's been? Yeah, this is the first full year, so a lot mm-hmm. of it's been on the grind with Inspire. Um, I'm kind of on the, the opposite spectrum. Um, I started in 2007, so and this has been my most successful creative year, but obviously, um, financially we're still fighting. We're still a young company. Um, so yeah. Um, as far as the creative stuff, I've been blown away and very happy to be able to put people I knew were talented in those roles and, and to watch them succeed. Uh, especially those McAllen kids, uh, Texas overall. Um, I think the NWA down here has, really spiked a lot of cooperation, which has been really cool watching people actually work together, not even work together, but just not work against each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and to that point, like it, it's still very frustrating. Um, on top of just seeing people that don't know how to market themselves, you see people that become that star in their hometown and they, they wonder why people aren't calling to, to fly them here or fly them there. They don't realize that extra step you have to take to, to get out and actually get into those downs. Like, it's not just going to be given to you. You have to get yourself out there. So, If I can ask one, uh, you mentioned the NWA. 
Um, so you guys, of course, down there, and I've learned so much. I, I know we were kind of like we speculated what is the NWA, what does it even matter a couple years ago uh, on the Mayhem show, and we d- d- discussed at length here on, on this show with your guys' involvement on there, like how how important that is and how much that is helping you guys out there in the area. Uh, and Joe, maybe you can chime in on this idea too. Do you think uh, other regions, uh, obviously the South, I think more kind of participates in NWA than I'm aware of, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, do you think other regions could could benefit from an NWA or something like an NWA to kind of pull the quality together, I guess? Um, uh, I, I've thought that uh, self-regulation is a great concept, but I don't have any idea how you would make it logically work. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in a perfect world, you would have these athletic commissions um, less concerned with their payday and more concerned with uh, the safety and, um, and, and, and maximizing the positive shows and getting rid of the riffraff, which would in turn probably make everybody more money in the end. Um, I don't know. I mean, the NWA still means something to a lot of people, especially down south. Um, it, it, it's never going to be what it was because of, uh, again, just the 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 vast scope of what's available out there. Um, you know, you would really, really need to, uh, uh, I mean, have a years and years long, uh, uh, plan, but it still has value. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, uh, Rob Conway has gotten more, uh, uh, buzz uh, as NWA champion than he has at any point since probably he left WWE. Um, so there's absolutely, um, there's something there. And I think, um, if I'm correct, Dave Marquez out of California had tried to start a, uh, sort of a, an NWA style conglomerate, mm-hmm. uh, based around, uh, television markets that I don't think panned out. I think he had an affiliate in Tennessee that had just, uh, um, ceased its, its television operations. Um, but there are ways to do it and there are ways to work together to boost yourself up and boost your partner up. Um, and, and I'd like to see, some degree of that, uh, of course, people can't trust each other and people have agendas. So it's always going to be very, very difficult. But I would love to see um, a more consorted effort to make sure the cream rises to the top and uh, uh, something is done uh, to whatever degree it is, be it, be it, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know necessarily what the answer is. You can't really blackball talent. They're independent contractors, but something to do. To, to get rid of these shows that just completely embarrass a given region. Cause if you go to a show and you see the fat guy in a uh, t-shirt and jeans, who was making your subway sandwich two hours ago uh, in the semi main event, well, you've killed the aura of believability. You've killed the illusion that we're all athletes. Well, not even illusion. You killed the, the, the uh, fact that everybody's supposed to be an athlete. Um, there's no sense of disbelief. You can't get into, into anything because he's just a regular guy. Um, which is why I yell at people who say I had a great match last night. Now up oh, back to the real world, back to the grind, have a double shift at Arby's ah, FML. <laughs> ridiculous because you spend thousands of dollars making a, 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 an appearance for yourself and an aura and a facade, no pun intended with gear, with training, with gym memberships. And then you go online and you bitch about your ex-wife or you complain about your day job. Why am I going to go to buy a ticket to see you mm-hmm. when all you're complaining about is all the paperwork you're filing? Sorry, you're not special. I think, um, I think, I think we may need to share around Sword's uh, blog from a little while ago about social media and, and wrestling in general. <laughs> I, I, I wrote one in 2011. Nobody listened to me. So yeah, I, 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 I entirely agree. I, I, I do see that a lot as well. And it's, Something I, I think a lot of people don't take into account. Listen, I pick my battles. Again, they don't know how to market or brand themselves. They just, oh, I'm going to go play wrestle. And they don't realize that if they actually treat it like a job, it might turn into one. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I pick my battles. My first thing is to make everybody uh, turn their iPhone the right way when they're filming a wrestling promo. Because <laughs> that just, I, that, I'm starting there. And we'll work on the rest of the ills later, uh, as far as my effort goes. So. <laughs> Can we just stop filming wrestling promos with an iPhone? <laughs> no, that's yeah. <laughs> Camcorders cannot be that expensive. Come on. Mm-hmm. Honestly, honestly uh, though, at at the right price, the iPhone kind of does better quality than that. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, in, in the long run. <laughs> yeah, and and 
I'll, I'll chip in and, you know, some people may not like me saying this, but it, the NWA was more just having a, a banner to, to organize around. Um, I don't think the NWA will ever be what it once was. I, the, that ship sailed, but it, it gives like-minded people something to kind of rally around and, and to, to kind of, you know, represent that, that family feeling of, okay, well, I'm going to look after this guy in San Antonio. We're going to try not to bury his champion up here in Austin. You know, it, it makes you think about those things where if you're just kind of friends with the guy in San Antonio and, you know, you may let that slide, but if you have, you know, the guy in Dallas calling you and going, Hey man, you kind of fucked over your buddy in San Antonio doing this. It's just accountability really. Um, I think, which is weird because the NWA is really the only thing that you can really rally around that. Uh, like you mentioned, Marquez trying to put that together and it falling apart. So it has that history that keeps it together. But at the end of the day, it's not so much it being the NWA. It's just having that, that centralized banner to rally behind. And then so. uh, to speak to sort of, you know, that idea of having a, a sort of one force that sort of, bonds groups together maybe uh, a lot of people are theorizing that could be what's uh, going to occur with uh, global force wrestling uh, obviously on a much larger scale with uh, them you know working with new japan and, and triple uh, i mean obviously i don't know how further that will go as far as collaboration between the groups but uh, uh i think any sort of step in that direction is always at least at least the intention of it is always i think well to see yeah, I don't. I don't know how much global force will be able to trickle down into the the local and regional wrestling um, mm-hmm. with what their mission statement seems to be. But hey, if it if it's able to do that, so be it. That'd be awesome. Definitely. Um, so now, just to sort of speak of, uh, you know, sort of the qualities like Joe mentioned of a wrestler, of, of you know the people that are getting themselves out there and stuff like that. Uh, and it doesn't need, and even necessarily have to be a name that a lot of people know or stuff like that. But if you can think of um, uh, names that stick out in your head as people you think should check out, some that maybe aren't getting, you know, as wide recognition nowadays as as, as they, you know, ha- as they could be, um, um, who kind of sticks out in your mind? Well, um, to me, the best wrestler in Pittsburgh is Jason Glory, hmm. um, bar none. And anybody out listening uh, can go to, uh, as we call it here in Pittsburgh, the Yins Tube. Uh, get on your W dots and go to YouTube and look up uh, Jason Gorey versus Paul London, which uh, is one of my absolute uh, favorite matches that has ever taken place uh, in the PWX organization. They they went uh, probably about 20 minutes, and that crowd was standing. And that's normally not the style those fans like their old school brawly types, but, uh, but London and Gory really lit it up for him. And Gory's a guy, um, not the biggest dog in the fight. Uh, he could probably benefit from, uh, from, uh, a, a, a little boost there, especially with the aura of his, uh, I hesitate to say persona because it's a lot like, it's a lot like he is, um, you know, uh, the intimidation factor and the ambiance and the presence and just the feel you get when he comes out. Um, he's got it, man. And, and the only knock against him is um, he's doing these amazing things on a lot of places that are slipped under the radar mm-hmm. and people aren't talking about him. But if you get him in Philadelphia, Chicago, New Jersey, uh, the right environment, the right opponent, I think he could really, uh, really break out because there's not much, separating him from uh again some of the names we've mentioned earlier that have really been able to uh to break out but it just it comes down to um you know consistently challenging yourself and consistently um looking to break barriers and and step out of your comfort zone um and and the guys that have done that they've either succeeded or they've failed but they've known they they put their heart and soul into it and um Facade is a good example of the Pittsburgh area of somebody who's done that. He has recognized who and what he is and what he brings to the table. Um, you know, uh, uh, the kids absolutely love him. Um, you know, the guys think he's cool. Um, you know, uh, ladies are into him. 
So he, he kind of runs the spectrum. He's got the neon colors. He's got the dreadlocks. He's a, he's a merchandising machine. Um, he's maximizing his minutes. He's making the most of his opportunities. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, he looks at it as a business. And, uh, again, I think that's something that uh, a lot of wasted potential is in by not, not honing that. Um, uh, I would say the other Pittsburgh individual that's coming up right now, well, a couple really, uh, Andrew Pallas is doing great things. He has a lot of charisma, um, and, and for his experience level, uh, a very, very solid, very confident, uh, Aiden Vale has been uh, hindered by some shoulder injuries over the past couple of years. And he's still really trying to find that spark within him. Mm-hmm. Um, but for being 22, almost 23 years old, um, sharp as attack mentally. And, and he, he really gets it. It just comes, it just comes to uh, finding that blockage from your brain uh, to your mouth, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. Um, and Chris LaRusso is, is so dedicated and he's, and this may be a backhanded compliment, but he's better now than I ever thought he would be. Um, he is so dedicated. Uh, every Ring of Honor camp, every seminar that he's in town for here in Pittsburgh, um, TNA Gut Check Challenge. He's he's always trying to learn, always trying to soak in information. Um, and he's, he's book smart and he's business smart. And that helps a lot, too. Um and, uh, you know, he's had some opportunities with Ring of Honor. He's been putting more high-profile matches here in Pittsburgh. Uh, he has the PWX championship. So um, those are guys that, uh, uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, have most or all of the qualities I think you need to, to break out. Um, this, of course, time will tell if, uh, if uh, the moon and the stars align and, uh, and they're able to get it all together and uh, put themselves out there. Definitely. And I mean, guys, you mentioned, I, I can attest to like Facade and like uh, Jason Bory, guys that I think have really transformed their image. Uh, I remember, you know, the, remember the first time I saw them and, and looking at them now, it's it's completely different. You definitely see that that transformation. Um, uh, so definitely, I would think of those think of those guys as, as ones to really look out for. Uh, uh, Biss, are there any that uh, come to mind uh, throughout the Texas area? That that's cool. I'll actually back that up. Uh, Jason Gorey came through Texas in late 2006 um, on like a 20 person uh, Rudy Boy Gonzalez TWE show. And I still remember the name because that's the guy that busted his ass the most that night. So, you know, that, that says right there, if if you get out there and, you know, you never know who's going to be watching you. Um, As far as Texas goes, I think Ricky Starks, is has everything he just needs to get himself out there uh matthew palmer is right there matthew palmer is just as talented as ach um just ach is a lot better at marketing himself and, and getting himself out there uh as far as i mean in a world where ronda rousey is probably one of the ufc's top draws i think cat green has everything she needs to be a star I, I, um, I she's one that I have been immensely impressed with lately. Um, I remember uh, you you actually sending me a tape of hers uh, around the time that uh, as a prospect to come to inspire. And I remember, I, and this would probably be around a year ago or so, but uh, I remember not thinking much of her. And, and she's one that's I think really transformed my opinion, uh, especially yeah. like. Yeah, and that took that took quite a bit of fight because. There, I always saw something there and her first outing for us was not very good. It didn't go well at all. So, but you know, she, she does a very good job of presenting herself on social media as well, which really helps out. Um, and is it cheating to say Barbie Hayden? I think Barbie <laughs> Hayden's right there as well, you know? Um, and then as far as young guys coming up, uh, Eric shadows and, and Matt riot, um, as a tag team, they, they probably need a tag team name at some point. Um, but yeah, I think those guys, if they keep learning, I think they're 22 and 23. So if they keep learning, I think they'll be right there as well. Awesome. Uh, I guess to close this out, uh, and, and obviously we, we talked a lot about, you know, sort of, especially in the last uh, discussion about like what makes sort of a good independent wrestler. Uh, if each of you could, you know, maybe give some advice to any guys out there of, of what they what they need or, or what they should uh Basically, make sure to, basically to let's on. let's look at this. What should a indie wrestler's resolution be for 2015 from uh, from the experts in the field here? 
Oh, wow. Uh, it's the same thing. Everybody's New Year's resolution is a gym membership. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's so hypocritical of me to say, but I digress. Um, <laughs> I, I think the most important thing is for indie wrestlers to realize that, that uh, um, they are a product. And they are the ones marketing that product. Nobody can market you better than you. Nobody knows what you bring to the table better than you. And that comes with not just marketing yourself to promoters, as in not just the stupid emails I get, which is, or I used to get, thankfully, I still have, I still have PTSD about them. Uh, the stupid emails I used to get that, that encapsulated, um, hey, you should book me. I could beat up all your guys. <laughs> or, you know. Or, or anything, you know, I'm 19 years old. I used to wrestle in the backyard and uh, I'm really tough and it's been my dream. I know I can do it. It's been my dream. Well, how the F do I market that? It's everybody's dream. You know, you're not <laughs> special. Um, and marketing yourself to fans. And that's the biggest problem. I go to an indie show and guys, what I will always do, and especially in Pittsburgh where a lot of guys are come up and I'll call their first match. I will, I will hit them with, what's your story? Who are you? How am I selling you? What's your character? What are you here to accomplish? And they'll give me that deer in headlights look. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Um, and again, going back to, and I'm not singling out anybody or any geographic region, but just if you're training somebody how to do this and encapsulating everything, um, just the wrestling doesn't mean dick. They have to be able to register an emotional connection with the people. And you can't do that being the guy in black tights versus the guy in white tights. So if you can't tell me how to sell you in your eight minute match, what the hell are you selling to them? What do you want them to leave thinking about you? What do you want them to know? What do you want them to learn? What story are we telling and where are we leading it to? Nothing. Um, and my two least favorite answers. Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you get your, your stereotypical heel and you can tell who he is cause he's the one wearing the sunglasses. Um, <laughs> he'll just tell me that he's a jerk and an asshole. Well, I defy you to name one heel in the history of professional wrestling that does not describe mm. every heel has some sort of jerk like qualities. What separates you? Um, if you say to me, Oh, I'm really dark and mysterious. There's not a lot known about me. Oh, it means you didn't think of anything. You just wanted to be the undertaker one day. Um, <laughs> you know, that doesn't work either. Um, sell yourself to the people. What describes you that can't describe anybody else in that locker room? Because that is what makes you a commodity now. That's what makes you worth a fan or a promoter reaching into their wallet and handing over money because you're on the show. Um, if you're a promoter, or if you're talking to a promoter, I should say, um, I can make you money because, uh, not because I'll show up, not because I'll sell 10 tickets to my family and friends, although that's cool. You know, it's a part of the business, but how can you draw in people that have no idea who you are? Um, think about that and think about how you're going to get to the next level. Cause, uh, as a wrestler, it's limited. You got a time limit, you got a shelf life. Um, you know, the unofficial cutoff point is, is 30 and some wrestlers have proven that's not the case lately. There's always exceptions. Cool. But, uh, you know, you can't be, uh, uh 45 and still emailing WWE talent relations. Um, so get out there while you can don't wait for somebody to tell you what the hell you've been doing. You know, do it while you're in your early to mid twenties, do something every day, email promotion, email a worker you used to watch growing up or email, uh, 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 you know, I mean, so many guys, uh, Les Thatcher, uh, Bill Barons, you know, J.J. Dillon, and I'm, not, I'm trying not to name drop, but all these guys, I've been able to pick their brains up. You know, Kevin Kelly, Jim Ross, all these guys who are out there, and maybe you email them 10 times and you'll be lucky to get one answer. They're busy. They have lives. They don't really know you. That's completely understandable. But put yourself out there because you never know what's going to happen. Because every opportunity I've gotten, every big opportunity I've gotten, and we're talking England, we're talking Ring of Honor, we're talking... Um, uh, uh, all the stuff I did in Cleveland, we're talking flying out to Los Angeles, um, even making Montreal theory, everything cool I've done was luck, timing and happenstance. It wasn't because I sought out to do that from day one. And it wasn't because necessarily I was the best guy for the job. So you put yourself out there, you get in the right people's minds. You never know what could happen. So just remember that, um, 
like uh, like we said earlier, they're not going to come to you. You have to sell yourself to them and put yourself out there. Um, look at The Rock. He sold himself like no other. Vince Russo, when he was in town, even said The Rock got where he is because he's the smartest guy in wrestling. Um, mm. You know, if you're just thinking bell to bell or just thinking what your cool finish is going to be, you're completely missing the point because the work never stops and the hustle never stops. And it really is a 24-7 job. So put yourself in that mentality. Think of it like a job, and maybe one day it will be. Wow. Definitely. Biss, uh, uh, any any advice you'd have? I, I will share my favorite. Please stop doing this uh, message to promoters. Uh, when are you going to book uh, and then saying whatever the hell your wrestling name is? <laughs> like, holy shit, I forgot you existed. Like, you totally would have been on the card, but thanks for reminding me. Yeah, stop that one. Uh, the social media stuff is definitely something a lot of people can can look to improve. And as far as treating like a business merchandise, you know, um, as a promoter, you can only pay somebody so much. There's only so much I can comfortably believe that you're going to bring in the door for me to pay you. So have gimmicks, have stuff that you can sell to, to subsidize that um, and, and have that on point. Um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, and get in the car. Get in the car and travel. You know, uh, go test yourself. Go test yourself in other areas. So definitely. Uh, so thank you guys. This is a very enlightening discussion. I would say yeah. uh, out of the fifty episodes that we've had, this was definitely the most enlightening uh, and and definitely a really fun one. Uh, if people listening want to check you out, uh, uh, find you on uh, social media. Uh, where can they Where can they find you? I am all over the place. Uh, of course, you can visit joe-dombrowski.com or joe-dombrowski.com if you prefer hyphens to dashes. Either way, um, and check out uh, uh, all the DVDs I have for sale, uh, uh, schedule, bio. Uh, my my horrendous weekend sitting next to Virgil is up there. Um, <laughs> and, and a lot of great merchandising opportunities. If you like collectible rare stuff, if you like my new stuff, whatever, uh, you can check that out. Facebook.com slash Joe Dombrowski Wrestling, uh, at Joe underscore Dombrowski on the Twitter. Um, I'm also on Instagram. Uh, I don't remember my name on Instagram. So, you know, it's just a, it's a rehash of Facebook and Twitter. You're not missing much. And uh, Mr. Joe Dombrowski on the YouTube where I've got trailers and some exclusive bits. I just posted a, a, a week or two ago, Tracy Smothers Dancing. So everybody <laughs> listening to this has no excuse not to search now for Tracy Smothers Dance Break and watch it on loop until you fall asleep. I, um, I, think, I think I'll be doing that after, after this podcast. <laughs> but, uh, Ace, I've done my job then. Out of, all, out of all my appearances on the Indie Mayhem show, this has definitely been one of my top two favorites. And <laughs> <laughs> also mentioned, you, you, you just announced some big news on the site as well. Um, oh, outsource announcing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely uh, pertinent yes, to this audience. Thank you for reminding me. I, I'm, yeah. I do so much, I, I can't even keep track of it. I've taken on six new projects since I started this sentence. Um, outsource announcing is my uh, uh, voiceover company from home. We'll do, uh, we'll do graphic work, we'll do posters, DVD covers, um, but, but mainly do uh, voiceover commentary. Uh, on your uh, wrestling event, your commercial, your video package. If you just have a match you want to send uh, to a promoter and make it seem professional, we can voice over that. And um, it brings quality and respect to whatever the product is without having a promoter or a client have to spend an excessive amount of money on transportation expenses, gas, hotel, stuff like that. So it really works out well for both sides because I don't have to leave my house and you guys can have an improved uh, uh, quality. Um, you can have uh, just me do it, or also uh, two new partners who uh, uh, are, are fellow Pittsburghians, if that's a term, uh, have just joined the Outsource Announcing family, that being former WWE announcer Jack Corpella, uh, who's a lifelong wrestling fan. He's not your stereotypical you know, suit that doesn't know what wrestling is. And also the franchise, Shane Douglas is also available if you'd like the Dombrowski-Douglas combo <laughs> that debuted for uh, Scott Demore in Border City in October. So uh, if anybody out there has a wrestling promotion or a, uh, a, a match or a commercial, or you just like to film yourself pulling weeds from your garden, shoveling snow, um, 
you know, whatever the case is, and you'd like uh, Shane Douglas to randomly voice it over for no reason, yeah, have, uh, we can accommodate. I have heard live uh, announcing of you with uh, common day tax and, and, and challenges, so uh, that's definitely something he can tackle. Oh, yeah, we, we're very versatile. We can make it happen. Definitely, definitely. What about you, Biss? Uh, Biss says, at, you know, at Biss says for Twitter, um, follow me and listen to me hypocritically bitch about my everyday job. <laughs> um, see, I think the Instagram is Biss and Rufus, which is, uh, you know, Rufus is one of the guys that broke in with me. So you can keep up with our hijinks, um, on there. And the most important thing is the inspire pro wrestling.com for, uh, all the actual good stuff that I do. So, um, check that out. Um, uh, Eamon, I might have to look into that outsource announcing, man. You may have just, you may have just <laughs> lost your job on this podcast. That sounds well, amazing. That, well, that's an crap. awesome project. I, <laughs> You know, um, that's really awesome. I hope a lot of people hit you up because, yeah, that's really cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. You know, I, I was, I was, you know, I was so back and forth, but, but Eamon just handled the question so well. Uh, if you guys listen on audio, uh, we have a lot of video. Uh, as these guys were talking, I was trying to bring up a lot of the guys, uh, a lot of the promotions we were talking about as we were going, so you can kind of get a little glimpse of what we're talking about in indie wrestling. And it's about exposing this kind of stuff. And this is exactly why we started the show, is these kinds of conversations, uh, because we're all here, because if we didn't love it, we wouldn't be putting this much into it. Uh, so uh, I, I love that we can have this. Uh, so uh, with that, Eamon, he's at Eamon too, please. You got anything you plug? Oh, you got a little something to plug there. That might be happening uh, that people can get yes. on newsstands. Uh, tell us again uh, where people can read your thoughts on paper. Oh, that is true. Uh, paper or digital because we are in a new age. But uh, uh, yeah, I got to, the the latest issue of NW Ringside Magazine is out, which uh, features my first article. I got to write for them to talk about the new promotions uh, that came into the NWA in 2014. So you can go to nwaringside.com to go check that out and, and purchase it. There's a lot of really good stuff in there as well. Love Inspire Pro Wrestling stuff, so so that's good as well. And, and I'll attest with this as well, InspireProWrestling.com. Get your tickets for January 4th. It's going to be a really, really fun one. Awesome. And, of course, on my side, check out everything uh, I'm doing with indie wrestling is basically at PittsburghWrestling.com. And, of course, WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the podcast wrestling side of things. Also, please follow um, at Sorgatron on Twitter or follow Sorgatron Media on, on the Facebook, on the Google+. Plus. We have a Sorgatron Media Advent Calendar sale going uh, all the way till December 25th. We have coupon codes. Uh, most uh, uh, shows, digital downloads for only 2 bucks. Uh, a roundabout uh, depends on day to day what we do for the sale uh, a lot of people jumping on that and completing their collection uh, a lot of uh, uh, definitely pittsburgh wrestling in general uh, vicious outcast wrestling uh, uh, international wrestling cartel uh, 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 what's that oh renegade wrestling alliance i'm sorry i just worked with them this weekend i just worked on their dvd <laughs> And they're the ones I forget. Uh, great shows by all three companies. Um, I, I, I can say without a doubt and full confidence personally, uh, they are the top three in the area. And like we said, we have way too many in the Pittsburgh area. Um, so please go check them out. And, and, and I'm happy we can kind of get them kind of exposed um, outside of the region. And, and hopefully maybe one of them will be the next big thing uh, as well. Um, and, uh, with that, thank you everybody again, please. Uh, we'll see you guys in the new year. We'll be back Tuesdays doing this thing live. I, I don't know how we're going to start off the new year. You know, we got, we got to take a look at our Rolodexes and, uh, and see, uh, uh, who we missed in, 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 in 2014. Amen. Yeah, there's, there's gotta be, there, there's gotta be a couple at least. It's, it's like, there's, there's one or two of them probably. Right. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> follow us at mayhem show on Twitter. Uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook and Google Plus. Please follow the Indie Mayhem Show if you haven't already. If this is your first episode, uh, check out an audio form on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And you can check out the video Wrestling Mayhem Show on the YouTube. You can get uh, subscribed to all the stuff that we're doing or just the playlist for this. That's cool too. Uh, so until next time, uh, make sure you're supporting your indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Ain't for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. 
Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, 